What's up everybody, Johan Wilbrink here, and today I want to talk to you guys about RFID and industrial automation. Now RFID is a robust technology used to tackle a number of needs in manufacturing. However, it can be a daunting task to select the right hardware and style of RFID needed for your application. So today, I wanted to overview that technology and where we see most customers using it here at NAF. Breaking it down, we put RFID in the three buckets where we see most customers using it. Starting with the first bucket, we have asset management. This is gonna be for people trying to ensure they have the right tool or mold installed before running a specific process, or even keeping inventory of those assets in cribs and warehouses to help track them down. Moving to bucket number two, we have traceability. This is gonna be for people trying to track the processes a workpiece goes through before entering the next. This is a good way for people to track defects back to the production line where the workpiece was created. Lastly, we have the third bucket, which is machine access control. Now this one's pretty straightforward. This is gonna be for people trying to allow access to machines for authorized users only. A common question we get asked here is if we can use building access badges for machine access. Unfortunately, those badges typically operate on an RFID encrypted signal and will not work for machine access. However, we do have solutions that have tamper-proof RFID stickers that can be applied to the backside of a badge and be used in the same way. Now that we've covered the common applications for RFID, let's dive into the technology itself. As we know, RFID stands for Radio Frequency Identification. In the industrial automation world, there are three frequency ranges used. It's important for us to understand the uses and differences between those three ranges so we select the right hardware for the application. Now those three frequency ranges are low frequency, high frequency, and ultra high frequency. Low frequency or LF is ideal for applications when sensing RFID tags on metal. Now sensing ranges vary depending on the hardware selected, but you can expect sensing ranges to be less than a couple of inches. Typically, we see low frequency used for tool or mold identification since those tags will be mounted on metal. Moving up to high frequency, we have the added benefit of processing and storing larger amounts of data when in comparison to low frequency. With high frequency, we typically see sensing ranges around 5 to 6 inches. Along with the added range, high frequency passes and moves data much quicker than low frequency, meaning it is much more fit for faster moving processes. Here at NAF, we typically see people using high frequency for tracking and tracing workpieces through production. Lastly, we have ultra high frequency, or UHF. This style of RFID will give you the largest sensing range with capabilities of sensing tags up to 20 feet away. UHF will pick up and read all tags visible, meaning it is great for asset tracking. This is the most widely used RFID frequency in interlogistic applications. However, it should be noted that UHF and the frequency it uses struggles picking up tags on metal and in environments where RFID tags are surrounded by metal. All right, so now that we've covered the different types of frequencies, let's talk about the hardware. Every RFID system consists of three components a processor unit, a read-write head, and a tag. Starting with the processor unit, simply put, this is the gateway between your RFID system and your machine's controller. It converts the data read from tags for the controller to use, along with sending data through the read-write heads to write to the tags. These are offered in various styles with added functionalities depending on what your application needs. And once you have your processor unit selected, you'll move along over to the read-write heads. These are also known as antennas, and they simply supply a frequency to the RFID tags, which powers the tags to be read or wrote to. Read-write heads are offered in various form factors and are determined by the processor unit the RFID system is using and what RFID frequency is needed. Lastly, we have the RFID tag. The tag is what stores all the data which is being wrote through the read-write heads from the processor unit. Now, the tags vary in size and form factors, which will impact the sensing range and how much data can be wrote to the tags. So once you have your tag, your processor unit, and your read-write head, you have your full RFID system. In summary, that was an overview of RFID and industrial automation. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to reach out to your local NEF representative and we'll get back to you guys as soon as possible.